The retaliatory strength of the armed forces has been enhanced by the development of a new incapacitating chemical agent and the munitions for its dissemination in the field. The new agent produces dramatic mental and physiological effects when inhaled. Several test series were conducted to determine the effects of the agent on ability to perform military tasks. Typical of the volunteer test subjects was an experienced non-commissioned officer with 12 years of military service. Prior to beginning the field experiment, he demonstrated his normal ability to perform fundamental military activities. His performances were in keeping with Army standards. The next morning, he was given a measured amount of the agent, equal to a tactically feasible field dose that can be delivered by the standard munitions developed for the agent. Three and a half hours later, when he took part in a masking drill, his manner was confused and indecisive. What's the trouble? You remember what I told you? Are you having trouble with your mask? No, I'm not. Did you try to put it on? Can you put your mask on now? The volunteer, a highly trained veteran soldier, found the simple act of masking a difficult task. Six and a half hours after exposure time, the confused volunteer needed help as he attempted to traverse part of an obstacle course. At this point, hallucinations and other mental disturbances were evident. Influenced by an obvious lack of purpose, the drugged volunteer made no effort to traverse the trail of tires. Uncharacteristically, he failed to follow instructions and chose the path of least resistance. At the series of horizontal bars, this well-disciplined soldier made no effort to go over them, but walked between them. There, he became completely preoccupied and indifferent. Further progress was out of the question. The following morning, 27 hours after being exposed to the agent, the volunteer repeated these portions of the obstacle course. Now, with the drug's peak effects receding, he could walk through the trail of tires, and with some difficulty, he successfully crossed over the series of six horizontal bars. On this second day of the test, the mental handicap had eased somewhat, and the volunteer was better able to comply with instructions. Periodic lapses into confusion continued, however, and some physiological stress remained. Another simple exercise on the first day of the test required the volunteer to deliver a compass to an officer stationed only 30 yards away. Seven hours after being drugged, he was unsteady and appeared uninterested and psychologically disorganized. Take the compass. Take the compass. Do you hear me all right? Do you understand me? Well, take the compass. Take your hand out of your pocket. Take your hand out of your pocket. Yes, take it now. Yes, take it to Lieutenant Langford at the company CP. Go over there now. His powers of concentration and coordination greatly affected. The volunteer made an effort to perform his assigned task. Dropping the compass, he retrieved it only after considerable difficulty. He continued briefly on course. However, as he neared his objective, he abruptly changed direction and in obvious confusion, wandered aimlessly through the woods.
Dr. Campbell, did you deliver the compass? Do you have the compass? You couldn't find the CP? You dropped the compass. Sergeant Campbell, pick up the compass. Down at your feet. At this point, the psychotropic effect of the agent was clearly demonstrated by the soldier's inability to comply with instructions to complete a simple errand. The next day, more than 27 hours after receiving the field dose of the agent, he demonstrated the recovery of much of his physical coordination. This time, he succeeded in delivering the compass to the officer nearby. Readily answering a sentry's challenge, he reported to the officer with military correctness, reflecting his training and experience. Given a verbal message to be delivered to the starting point, the volunteer started back. On his return trip, mental confusion again took over, and although his entire course was open to view, he went off on a tangent through the trees. Reorienting himself later, he ultimately reached his objective, but was unable to deliver the officer's message correctly. One week after being exposed to the drug at the beginning of the experiment, Sergeant Campbell and another volunteer were interviewed by the medical officer who had supervised the tests. How was it with you, Sergeant? I think it would be a very effective agent, sir. Can you tell us uh, what the experience was like? Well, sir, uh, all I remember is uh, after getting the injection, about an hour I started to uh, get chills and lose my uh, sense of speech. I remember coming over here to the uh, obstacle course. Beyond that, I don't remember anything until Thursday morning. Nothing at all? Nothing, sir, except uh, I remember trying to get out of a closed room. That was the padded room over in yes, the ward. Sir. Sergeant First Class Campbell, once again a first class soldier, could remember only one of the many events that took place between Tuesday morning and Thursday morning, a span of about 48 hours, even though he had seemed to be functioning correctly at times during that period. This psychological impact, together with the physiological stress it imposes, makes this agent a veritable chemical ambush for the soldier.